Do you know how far light travels in a year? No. Oh, this is the account if we're looking at space facts. Look at this. It doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense. It was at the peak of the Marvel Cinematic yeah, Universe, yeah, yeah. and my wife didn't know who Thanos was. All right, Uranus. Welcome back, everybody. Dynamite intro, Mrs. Lush. Today, we're going to be looking at some scientific phenomenon. Phenomenon. Phenomena? Phenomena? Things happening in science that are very exciting, which I'm pumped about because I'm the science guy and my wife here is coming along for the ride. God bless her. Yes, science! Just to clarify, I do enjoy science, but more in like the chemistry, medical type setting. Anatomy, physiology, yeah. yeah. Nurse related things. Outer space, not so much. Creepy facts. Oh, about space. space, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> that will keep you up tonight. First thing is space. We didn't even know what this was going to be. When you look at stars in the sky, you're actually looking back in time. I mean, light takes so long to reach Earth that by the time you see it, years have passed. Uh, but. You're looking back in time. The light you're seeing happened thousands of years ago. You know what's crazy is I actually think about this all the time. What? I know, it's, like, I, when I look at space, like, I, I live in such wonder of the is universe. Is that why you're always so, like, out there when I'm trying Correct. to ask you to do something? Yeah. Your brain is literally in outer space. You're like, honey, why are nine pairs of shoes scattered around the house? I'm like, I just can't remember where I take chores? them off. I'm thinking about the fact that every time I look at the stars, I'm seeing light that was created hundreds of years ago. I can't, it's hard for a little pea brain human brains to conceive the magnitude of the size of the universe. I love that one. The sixth greatest fact of all. Like, before we get into this What one, is happening? He's the, going the, back the, to the The right idea now. of something being thousands of light years away. Do you know how far light travels in a year? No. That's insanity. Whoa. Of all time. Sixth greatest fact. Because if you were to stand yes. in front of just the right speaker, the sound waves themselves could kill you. Don't oh. believe me? This is the loudest speaker on Earth. It's in the Netherlands and used to test whether satellites can withstand the noise of a rocket launch. It produces 154 decibels, which means you would instantly deafen That's and huge. even feel nauseous and begin vomiting. But you wouldn't die. For that, we need to go louder. The loudest sound ever registered mm. was the explosion of the Indonesian island of Krakatoa in 1883, which people in Texas heard as loud as a gunshot. So Indonesia to Texas, that's like across the entire Pacific Ocean. This is one of those things again, where it's like, who's getting these facts? We playing a little game of telephone here. Maybe it was in Texas. Maybe it was just an actual gunshot. <laughs> For sailors closer to the eruption, the sound registered is 190 decibels, which is 10,000 times more powerful than the satellite horn. Sound can't reach more than 194 decibels because after that, it no longer travels sinusoidally within the atmosphere and actually pushes the atmosphere itself. Huh. But that's only here on Venus. Sound can be 10,000 times more powerful, wow. and a guitar solo would hit you like a bomb blast. You know, that is interesting when you think about it, because the, you know, the way we hear sound and sound interacts is it's just a wave, so it has to move through physical space, so it will change based on the atmosphere. So like if you go somewhere, like a watch a rock concert on Venus, for instance. Sound a little different. We might go deaf because there's no, there's no atmosphere to, to dampen the sound. Unfortunately, we'd be dead long before we got there. Sure. Because humans can't exist in Venus. But these are the things that get me excited. I'm having the time of my life. Fascinating demonstration of static electricity. I don't need a demonstration. No, I knew this tangent was coming. I felt it the second this word static popped up. Go. Have your moment. Because every day, when I'm in this godforsaken office, if I'm sitting here for more than three seconds and I stand up and touch something metal, I get zapped because there are so many electronics in this office. You can't see it directly in this frame, but I have five monitors, multiple computers, cameras everywhere. I can't even take a deep breath without touching the next metal thing and getting jolted. Oh, I've witnessed you enough times. <laughs> yeah, when Screaming, I'm set up, she'll be yelling, over here. swearing. I go to turn so the camera mad. on and I'm like, all right, we're hitting record. Ah! Drives me nuts. I should just get a bunch of dryer sheets in here. Dryer sheets are great. That's actually pretty badass. Ding, 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 ding. That is, I would say, mildly cooler than the way I demonstrate that electricity. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. If you took oh, Earth with all of its mountains, crazy. valleys, and hills, and, and shrunk it down to the size of a cue ball, it would be smoother than any cue ball ever machined. Think about it. The distance between the lowest point on Earth's surface and the highest point on Earth's surface is 11 miles. That is less than the length of Manhattan, yet we are 8,000 miles in diameter. And those two points are very far separated from one another. 
If you were a cosmic giant and you came up to Earth and you rubbed your finger over Earth's surface, it would feel as smooth. I was just gonna say this is definitely on Rogan for sure. And that we just need a meme where it's like Rogan, like, like everything he says would be like something I would say with my boys in high school after ripping like a fat boy. Dude, you know if you shrunk the Earth down the size of a cue ball, like, it would be smoother than a cue ball. I love the Joe's like. Wow. Are you even familiar with who this guy is? Batman? No. Yeah. You don't know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is? I know I do. I also learn a lot in the podcast, and I will say, not knowing who Neil deGrasse Tyson is is not nearly as bad as the Thanos moment we had in 2018. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, nothing will ever top blah, that. Blah, blah, it was at the peak blah, of the Marvel Cinematic yeah, Universe, yeah, yeah. and my wife didn't know who Thanos was, blah, blah, blah. and I'll never forget it. It was the funniest moment of my life, and I love you for it. I just love how five years later I'm still hearing about it. <laughs> I, I bring it up every video. I am inevitable. Every day if you sleep at, for example, let's say 9.30. Every single day you go to sleep 9.30 and you wake up at 7, mm -hmm. right? Then your body naturally at 9.30 will begin to release um, the hormones and stuff that yes. make you sleep. Yes. yes. The day, even if it's a single day, that you don't sleep exactly around 9.30. Say, for example, you sleep at 12.30 that day. Your brain will think, oh, no, I'm in danger. Something probably went wrong which is probably why I'm not sleeping right now. Cause I'm probably avoiding some kind of danger. So I won't let you sleep properly and I'll make sure you sleep less. So you wake up to make sure that you're still safe. The other piece of the circadian rhythm that plays a huge amount into what sets your circadian rhythm is exposure to sunlight. A lot of the, uh, the optimization uh, circles like Andrew Huberman, if you're familiar with him, he's talked a lot about how important it is to get sunlight in the morning just to set your clock because it helps with hormone regulation, your whole body. Ideally, like the baseline of optimal health starts with consistency around sleep and circadian rhythm. That was something I took for granted for a long time. Long, I was like, oh, long, long, as long as you eat, time. As long as you eat healthy, like, you know, I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead type long of thing. Time. I was like it. getting depressed and like, it was crazy. And I was like, what's going on? Yeah, super self-sabotage. It's like, you just correct, try to sleep a little more consistently, start taking a couple of, key vitamins and like, I feel like a million bucks. Like it's night and day. Papa Leon here telling you guys to get your sleep. <laughs> and now a science fact. This guy's pumped many about it. Out there think the strongest oh, I know Thomas Sanders, he's funny. Diamonds. And many Marvel fans out there think it's vibranium. Well, both are wrong. <laughs> nice. In fact, the strongest objects on earth are those little lumps of clay found in those old games of cranium. Remember that game? <laughs> Dig it out of your closet, take a look at it now. This shit is hard as fuck. Like that as a joke. When I was gonna say, Thomas Sanders is a comedian. Real time oxygen production on a leaf? Get out of here. Um, what? So you understand photosynthesis. Oh, right? thank you. Yeah. Let me go back to fourth grade. <laughs> well, you sounded perplexed when I said oxygen synthesis from a leaf. I'm just. We're seeing it under a microscope. Real... I mean, that's okay. We put a leaf under a microscope and it made bubbles. The weirdest facts about space you didn't know. Oh yeah, this baby. This is 55 Canary E and it's Ooh. a planet completely oh, made planet. out of diamonds. And NASA estimates the planet is worth this much. That's 30 zeros. And space is not really silent according to astronauts. It's full of sounds, but humans just can't hear them. Sure. So they made a computer to translate those sounds into ones we could understand. And strangely enough, this is what Jupiter it sounds like love it yeah they did that recently with like a black hole they were able to get i don't know how they were able to get some sort of like sound waves out of a black hole or something and it was like just very eerie so sounds the like a white noise machine to me <laughs> yeah astronauts grow around three to four inches tall in space so if you're under six feet there's your chance Wait, no it doesn't make any sense that makes no sense what were you saying because there's no gravity is that I'm why saying so like your body stretches out somehow. so if you were to actually take a tape measure i'd be four inches taller i'd be six seven but then when you come back to earth here six three again no nah, that's nonsense if there's someone that wants to refute that in the comments by all means but I, i'm calling both Bullshit on that fact. These are the oh, Pluto fun things facts. about the dwarf planet Pluto. Please don't yell at me for saying dwarf planet. It's not a planet, but it's still really cool. I'm team Pluto. Pluto has a moon that's so massive that the two of them orbit each other and are tidally locked, which means that they always face each other, which is very romantic, but also Pluto has a heart on it. So talk about Valentine's. We're basically like Pluto and Pluto's moon. And Pluto has five moons, which is very bold it's considering it's status. Another thing I like about Pluto is that it's not trying to be like the other planets. It knows it isn't one of them. So while all the other planets in the solar system orbit the sun on a flat plane, mm. Pluto doesn't. Pluto's orbit is 
wonky. And Pluto Pluto's isn't quirky. always the farthest planet in the solar system. It actually gets closer to the sun than Neptune. Not all the time, but sometimes. Some astronomers hmm. think that Pluto has a subsurface ocean. I don't think people realize just how little Pluto is. Here it is compared to the United States. This is a lot of Pluto facts. Good yeah. lord, I don't think I could spend 40 minutes on Google and find out this many Pluto facts. Astro Alex, all right, on brand, it's just Astro Alexandra. My question is, are you 2.1 million followers? Jesus. Oh, this is the account if we're looking at space facts. Look at this. Interesting facts about space. The speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per hour. If a person could travel that fast, then in one second, he could circle the Earth seven times. See? Remember, this is a hark back to the beginning of the video when I was like, yeah, the well, idea no. of something being thousands of light years away. Do you know how far light travels in a year? There you go. You could circle the Earth seven times in a second. I was watching that video, but I was not listening or processing anything whatsoever. My wife likes science, but it has to be in very bite-sized amounts. But back to my main point. So in one second, seven times around the earth, uh -huh. how many seconds in a year? Too many. To Too many. So, and then things are thousands of light years away. It's inconceivable. The, the white, white dwarf star. star. Is so heavy that a piece the size of a sugar cube weighs as much as an entire car. That's okay. awesome. I love that. The density of the mass. So dense. The, evening, the stars of the famous Ursa Major are actually in different galaxies. Huh. And the International Space Station is the most expensive object ever built by mankind. What? No chance. No. I, all right, you know, maybe it is. I always like to, I, I pretend like I have something to back up my claims of trying to dispute their claims, but I certainly don't. But I find but that- also someone's got to fact check I them. find that really hard to believe. Most expensive thing built of all time. Okay, International Space Station. <laughs> so this motherfucker's just Googling things. Can we really trust Google though? Silicon Valley companies trying to steal our time to make money? I don't think we can. You know what? I love Google. They're my technically kind of my employer. So love you guys. Thanks for all the ads. $150 billion, the amount which has gone towards its existence in terms of building and designing is $150 billion. I initially was thinking strict, strictly like structure size, Sure. But mostly you're talking logistically. How do you get something like that? Yeah, yeah. And then the amount of money it costs to get people up there to service it and make sure it's working back and forth. So you're talking about the cost of all the trips of astronauts to and from space, blah, 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 blah. Makes a little more sense now. This is how long it would take you to get to each planet. Part two. Go. Let's That's go. That's what I like. All right. If you were ever so foolish to try and go to Pluto, you deserve what's coming. And while you're at it, you might as well go ahead and get in your favorite pose because once you get to Pluto, you're going to be an ice statue. So yeah, go ahead yeah. and do that. Of course, Pluto that's being one of the, the coldest planets will basically kill you in minutes. Um, so make sure you have some warm suit on. Minutes, minutes, bro. You'd be dead long before you got <laughs> to Pluto. If you got outside, you would die almost immediately. If you were in a spacesuit and then outside of the spacesuit. It space would take you about yeah. 10 years to get to Pluto, which I kind of stalled it because I didn't think any of you would be so stupid to go to Pluto. But uh, I know a lot of you were about to go, so just warning you. That negative 400 degrees is not looking so good. Negative 400? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're not you're not lasting very long. 10 years? I'm trying to think, because, like, this whole thing with Elon Musk trying to colonize Mars, the problem becomes, like, it takes multiple years just to get there, right? So, like, anyone who's going to pioneer that thing, it's uh, even longer than that. Like, how? Hold on, I have to know this. Oh, it's only seven months, huh? Oh, that's all? Seven-month journey. I mean, compared to 10 years to get to Pluto. Yeah, so 10 years to get to Pluto, you're probably just not coming back. <laughs> be six years to get here, but good luck finding the surface when you get here. You have a better chance of finding John Cena than you do finding the surface of Jupiter. Nice. Because when you think about the fact that Jupiter has no real surface it's and these gas, are all just like right? liquids, you yeah. know how when you look at oil on the ground? This is what this planet is. You would essentially just get tossed around for years and years and years. Yeah, until you die. All right, Uranus, the, the planet TikTok. I'll travel to Uranus. No one's ever made a joke about that before. Nah, ever. nah, you boys the only one. Mr. Original, Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 305. Shut up. <laughs> and start with your jokes, because I, I did not funny. <laughs> Man just the, told you. The timing of that was too good, dude. Uh, yeah. Oh man, that was so Stop unplanned. Stop jokes because I not just funny. got so wrecked by this kid. I'm I'm in my glory. Right I just now. got so wrecked by this kid, and it wasn't even. You already know it's not funny. Uh, I know, but, you but really tried. I'm legitimately the king of dad jokes on this channel. This is what I do. My non funniness. I know there's three people out of everyone that watches this. That's like nice. No. I <laughs> and am that's who I do it for. That that that's, hey, that's who I do it for. Love you guys. <laughs> I think we should. Yeah. I'm all out of Uranus jokes, so I guess it's time to stop the video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us on these incredibly uh, bold and exciting scientific facts. We'll see you in the next one. We appreciate you. Peace.